So, Susan, I'd like to start by reading a tweet from Eddie Van Halen in 2017. Okay. It's a sad day in rock and roll. Malcolm Young was my friend in the heart and soul of ACDC. I had some of the best times of my life with him on our 1984 European tour. He will be missed, and my deepest condolences to his family, bandmates, and friends. We've now lost both of them. How surreal is that? Oh, for me, it's it's horrible, because I knew both of them, and I met both of them. Um, what's really crazy, Malcolm is two years older than me, but Eddie and I were born in the same year, as was Angus. So Eddie and Angus actually have been like my, my touchstone of like, hey, you know, when you get to that point of like, you know, you're getting too old to do this. And I'd look at those guys and go, no, they're, they're still doing great, you know. And then when, well, when Malcolm got sick too, I mean, it, it's very tragic that he was not well for several years before he passed. Right. And then with Eddie, you know, um, I knew he was having problems. You know, I knew he was flying to, to Germany for cancer treatment. Um, but nobody really knew that his, you know, condition got a lot worse. And for him to die at 65, we lost Malcolm at 64. Two of, really, two of the greatest rock musicians, I think, that ever existed. Absolutely, yeah. And not just musicians, but amazing songwriters. Oh, gosh, yeah. I, I mean, that, that it's almost like it's hard to describe. Because, you know, what Malcolm did for rock and roll and then what Eddie Van Halen did for rock and roll, both of them just completely astounding talent. I knew Malcolm better, of course, than I knew Eddie, but both of them were such sweet people. Right. You know, that you would think that, you know, hey, I'm, you know, I'm Eddie Van Halen or I'm Malcolm Young, you know, move over. Neither one of them had that attitude toward people at all. I heard that Malcolm's car, his last car was a Nissan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. He didn't care. Yeah. He, he, I think it was his nephew, one of the people that spoke at his funeral, at Malcolm's funeral, um, said that a good shopping day for Malcolm was uh, six black T-shirts and a couple of pair of jeans. <laughs> that was it. You know, unbelievable. You know, both of them. When Van Halen came on, oh my goodness, everything was like, yep, we're going to flip this right upside down for you. <laughs> yeah. And those hands that played Eruption at one time were wrapped around your thigh. Yes, yes, they were. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes, they were. And <laughs> the funniest thing is that, and it's hard to believe because, um, you know, the, the, the picture is, is beyond priceless. Yeah. When, when we went to take that picture, I was literally intimidated by the band because they were crazy. I mm -hmm. mean, Michael and David were, you know, pretty level. Eddie was very quiet, but Alex was crazy for sure. So, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I figured, you know, if I, if I stand in front of these guys, somebody's going to grab me. That's it. I know it, you know? Yeah. So I re I refused to take the picture. And, the, you know, my photographer looked at me like, you know, since when? And the band started, you know, fake crying and go, oh, we're not good enough. That's okay. You know, I mean, it was so funny. And finally, they, they were all picking on me so badly that I walked up to them and I looked at them and I said, not one person touches me. But then Eddie bends down to the floor and everybody starts laughing and even the photographer's giggling and I'm, I'm thinking, well, what's so funny about this? Because I'm thinking, you know, he's just, he's trying to get into the shot, I guess. Mm. And, and I had these big, wide leg pants on. And I didn't, if I would have felt his hands where they were, mm. I would have hit the ceiling and then I would have punched somebody. <laughs> and then the funniest thing, a couple weeks later, they played uh, the Loops birthday party. Mm -hmm. So I saw them in another club, and it was, you know, crazy and great. And I got them to autograph one of the copies of our paper. And I have an autograph from Eddie saying to Sue, I love your size. Eddie.
Eddie Van Halen. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Eddie was just warming up his fingers, right? He was. He yeah. Was them out. That's it. You know, no big deal. <laughs> <laughs> but then that didn't put me into the history until later that night when Alex Van Halen decided that he wanted to show me a trick in the elevator, which once I got in the elevator, I realized, hmm, maybe this <laughs> wasn't such a good idea. Mm. And uh, he smashed his head in the elevator door, and then he pretty much made me do it. <laughs> And and that was something that Alex couldn't get anybody else to do, right? No, nobody, nobody. I, and this, the band actually acted afraid of me after that. They kind of looked at me like, yep, she's as crazy as Alex. Yeah. <laughs> Don't mess with her. <laughs> <laughs> but who knew, you know? I mean, that story got me flown to L.A. in 2003, to be in the DVD, the early years, Van Halen. That's DVD. right. That's right. Yeah you're, yeah, you're you're definitely in that multiple times for sure. Yeah, and yeah. Uh, you know now I actually now sadly after Eddie passed, um, I did an interview with uh, the Van Halen News Desk, which is a, a great site yep. to go to and absolutely a good inside information. And somebody read that and got a hold of me, and I'm going to be in another Van Halen DVD. Fantastic. Yeah. So yeah. you know when an up and coming rock star asks you to smash his head in an elevator door with him. Say no. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, like, look at us right now. Like, 40 years later, we're still talking about the Sheridan in Madison, Wisconsin, right? Oh, it, yeah. That was pretty legendary all the way around. So I'm still astonished by the fact that, you know, this little chick from Wisconsin, <laughs> mm -hmm. of all places, um, ended up meeting and, and getting to know you know, so many people and even, you know, Eddie and, and Malcolm. And uh, um, when I see pictures of Eddie with Les Paul, and Les Paul ended up being a friend of mine, he wrote the foreword for my second book, Famous Wisconsin Musicians, because he's, he's a Wisconsin boy. Wonderful person, to the sweetest man ever. And I, I, he's the only one I asked, and he said, absolutely, he used to call me doll. He goes, absolutely doll. He goes, look, when do you need it? So you had Les Paul write your forward. You had Chad Smith from the Red Hot Chili Peppers as well. Yes, I did. He wrote the forward for the ACDC FAQ book. I was thrilled by that. And the connection to him is that his brother, Brad Smith, worked at Hal Leonard, my publishing company. Okay. And I found out from Brad that Chad was a huge ACDC fan and I was looking for someone to, you know, write a forward for me and Brad was like, oh my God, my brother would die. And I'm like, seriously? And he's like, yeah, yeah. And I said, well, pff, give him, go ahead, give him the assignment, let him, let him write it. And when he wrote it, it actually, I got tears in my eyes. It, it, I think it's one of the coolest forwards I've ever read. Yeah. It is. You know. Yeah. Killed it. He was so honored to do it, and I'm thinking, you know, you're Chad Smith of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. <laughs> <laughs> but he was super cool. Now, I have to ask you, uh, because you have, well, I don't know if it's a unique experience. We are talking about David Lee Ross, so maybe it wasn't that unique. The bathroom story. Hmm. Hmm. Mm. Ah, yes, I love that story. Um, <laughs> all right. Well, okay. I love David. I mean, who doesn't? You know, mm -hmm. David Lee Roth to me is like the uh, just a standard of rock star. You know, he's got the looks, he's got the chops. You know, he's got the scissor kicks. I mean, he was amazing. Yeah. But I had a crazy crush on Eddie. I, I you know, anybody could have showed showed up that night, and I didn't care. I, I loved Eddie, and that's all I cared about. So David was just the singer to me, mm -hmm. and uh, and he could tell that because every woman that came, you know, within a foot of him were like, "Oh my God, Dave!" You know, and I'm like, "Hey, Dave, you know what's up?" And uh, <laughs> so when they were getting dressed to go on to the play the show that night, 
the band members started taking turns going into the bathroom, changing into their stage clothes. And uh, David just started changing into his leather pants and right in front of me. And he didn't ask me to turn around and I didn't offer. So, <laughs> so I was, you know, David and I bonded pretty quickly. Yeah. Um, so, you know, it was great. Yeah. <laughs> It was fantastic. I yeah. loved it. <laughs> yeah. But uh, he can be very serious and very, you know, very grounded and down to earth kind of guy when you just talk to him and uh, he's not doing the, you know, the David thing. Right. And trashing the seventh floor of the Sheridan in Madison, Wisconsin, right? Well, he did that. And, you know, <laughs> I'm, I'm going to put a lot of that on Alex, okay? Um <laughs> I know Eddie did barely nothing, and I'm sure Michael was probably part of some of it, but I'm going to put a lot of that on Alex, because Alex was a wild man. Like a Keith, Keith Moon is who he reminded me oh, of. Okay, like, yep. Yeah. You know, if somebody's going to walk in and rip the wall fixtures off the walls, it's going to be Alex. Uh -huh. so, yeah. yeah. He, was, he was a bundle of fun. I'll give them that. <laughs> yeah. Slamming your heads in the elevator door. What could be more fun than that? But who gets credit for the fish, Sue? Oh, man. That, that has to go back to the roadies and the band because that was their thing. They called it fishing. And they did it everywhere. They put, you know, like frozen fish in, in other, the other bands here. That kind of stuff. I mean, they did it everywhere. Mm. And I think the, the roadies had a lot to do with that, too. Okay. But um, but they yeah, in the Sheridan they they duct taped frozen fish to the ceiling of the hallway <laughs> so it would melt and you know drip on you because they thought that was just the funniest thing ever. Oh my god! <laughs> uh, they, they switched they switched rooms like they would take all the furniture out of one room and put it all in the other room so there'd be no furniture in one of the rooms and and uh, the first night I heard I wasn't there on the first night they were there for three nights I was there for the second one mm. third one I was at the Playboy Club in Chicago covering a band for CBS yeah. so I missed uh, throwing the table out the window yeah which was very disappointing <laughs> but I missed it um, <laughs> but uh, the first night they got so many noise complaints that they they had a cop parked in the parking lot outside the hotel you're kidding that's how, yeah that's how many times so Alex, he, he was, he thought this was the funniest thing. He told me that, you know, they had, I don't know, 20 people up there or whatever. They were having a, a lot of fun. And so they knew the cops were on their way up. So Alex herds everybody into his room, tells him, don't make a sound, be quiet. And then he grabs Eddie and throws him out in the hallway, shuts the door and locks it. So when the cops came, Eddie's out in the hallway by himself. They want to know where all the hell the, the noise is coming from. And they're banging on Alex's door, and Alex is pretending he's asleep. And they're looking at Eddie like, what the hell? Yeah. Oh, my God. Eddie was so mad at him for that. I he bet. Really pissed off. I bet. Because a lot of times, Eddie would just be hanging in his room by himself, right? Noodling with the guitar. and Exactly. That's, yeah. that's what he always did. 